I love this passage of scripture in James 4, 13 and 17. We get the expression when somebody says, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Or we say, the Lord willing, and the trip don't rise. And this is where we get that scripture from. Because we don't know what tomorrow brings. And uh, we just count on the Lord's will, don't we, to make it through each day. Especially uh, this past year, anyway. And uh, we can probably say, Lord willing, and then COVID don't rise. I think our look around bodies, probably. But, but uh, thank the Lord that we're safe here in church. And uh, we're praising the Lord in tough times. The scriptures, and this particular passage of scripture, tells us how important the Lord's will is in our lives. How dangerous it is to put off the Lord's will. It says here that our life, in verse uh, 14, that our life is a mist. Now, when we were kids, we kind of laughed at that scripture and said, yeah, right. I can't even wait till Christmas when I was a kid. And they're telling me that my whole life is a mist. And Billy Graham, who lived to be 99 years old, couldn't figure out how fast the years went. And he would agree with the scripture, even at 99, that life is a mess. And normal, 91, life goes quick, doesn't it? It really does. We're so thankful that normal keeps out there with the tractors, even without a cat. I mean, I see him out there with... Out of Cadillac's tractor, going through those cold winds, and uh, but we are so thankful that we are here praising God, trying daily to find the Lord's will in our life. As we think in terms of enriching family life, we should be on guard of neglecting the things that are really important in life. The Lord's will is important in our life. Now, Ben Franklin, now this, I know this might sound a little strange, but this is what he said about the important things of life, that it all might start with a nail, okay? This is what he said, a little neglect may bring mischief, 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 for what, for one of a nail, the shoe was lost, for one of a shoe, the horse was lost, for one of a horse, the rider was lost, being overtaken and slain by an enemy. All for what? Of a little care about a horse shoe nail. Okay, now I think you get that. Don't you just? A little nail can make a difference. And what a great difference you can make if you find and nail God's will in your life and he will bless you by trying everything you possibly can do to do what he wants you to do. By neglecting certain basic ingredients, we can guarantee the breakdown of our family. So we're going to be talking about our family this morning, and some of the things that really, really hurt us and our family if uh, we neglect some very important family principles. The number one point is neglecting the Bible hurts the family. Starting the new year, and your bulletin again, you have a new year for reading the Bible. Starts off with Genesis, and uh, you have to read the first four chapters, and then five through eight. It'll only take you 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes, to read the Bible through in one year. So, now, are we too busy? to devote 20 minutes to the Lord. I don't think we are. I think it's the Lord's will that we are Bible readers as Christians. Each family should have a Bible in the home. And it's not for display purposes. I remember as a kid that we had this great big Bible in our coffee table. I think everyone had a family Bible back in the 50s that we displayed on the coffee table or on the for a you know, very appropriate place within the home. Um, the Bible should not be just displayed. It should be read, it should be loved, and it should be reverent. Its teaching should be obeyed by parents as they seek to set a good example for the children and, and this audience for the grandchildren. Okay, so we, and I, I know I went out to 
Julie and John, and there was kids all over on this great big pile of snow. I mean, they were digging tunnels, going down with their sleds, you know, throwing snowballs. They were, they were having a great time in the snow. And, then, and I know we have the privilege of having our grandchildren uh, and, and children. You too, Molly. We're glad to have you come too. <laughs> and Audrey was there yesterday, and we just had a great time. And it all starts with um, the Bible, and uh, it really does. The Bible just setting an example how important the Bible is to your family. How sad that many families in the world don't even have a Bible, and if they have one, they don't read it. As I've always said many times, there are 53 countries in our nations that do not allow the Bibles even within the country. Now, we hope that never happens in the United States of America. But if we neglect the Bible, and everyone neglects the Bible, it could happen in the United States of America. So we must be very prevalent about God's Word in government, God's Word in our home, and God's Word in our schools, which I think has been neglected. And how sad. I don't know how that come to be. About 1962, they took the Bibles out of school. I don't know if they, well, one thing we know, they tried to take Jesus out of school, but they left the devil in. And how sad that is. Number two, and that one thing that we should never neglect is neglecting public worship for the family. I've always said, and I'll say it again, the greatest American scene is seeing the whole family in church. That is the greatest American scene that is possibly known to man, but it's sad that, that doesn't happen very often anymore. Everybody's going this way and that way. We got ball games on Sunday morning, that uh, little league football games on Sunday morning. We got dance classes on Sunday morning, and somehow worship has been pushed aside. Stores are open. You remember the blue law when no stores were open on Sunday morning? There was a time when you could only find a gas station open on Sunday morning, but that's all gone by the wayside. And Sunday seems to be just another day. We get up and do our thing and don't even think about worshiping together as a family and with our friends. Sunday is not a Sunday without church. I remember on December 20th, it was a beautiful morning like it was this morning. Did you get out and enjoy? I know it was a little foggy, but the trees, I don't think I've ever seen them more beautiful than they were this morning. Now, I had the privilege of walking Molly's dog this morning, and uh, so I, I even made the dog enjoy it. I know that, <laughs> but uh, it, it was a beautiful morning. What a beautiful morning it is. Your day is made because you have been in church worshiping the Lord, and a day is empty, especially on Sunday, if we don't go to church, to thank Jesus and the Lord and the Holy Spirit for everything that He has given to us. It's the best investment that you can make by making your sure that your family is in church. Now, my children never had the courage to come up to me and say, Dad, I'm not going to church today. Uh, they would have been thrown in the car so quickly <laughs> that, uh, you know, and, uh, so they, they never had that courage. Of course, it looks bad if the minister kids aren't in church, you know what I mean? And so, but anyway, that's the way it should be, you know? Now we ask a five-year-old, do you want to go to church this morning? Uh, what's he going to say? But that happens, you know, especially if they don't want to go. Children should not be sent to church. They should be led to church. I know that there was a time when parents would drop off the children. Now we have parents that are too lazy to get up to even drop them off. And how sad, I'm sure, the Lord cries when he sees whole families sitting and uh, just laying in bed. Too often, too many people worship St. Matthew. Take a little time to, to get that one. But uh, St. Matthew is so holy, it's more holy than just getting up as a family to worship the Lord your God. If you're looking for a fight, 
The worst thing that you can do is condemn the bride on her wedding day. Now, I can't imagine anybody doing that. But that's exactly what you're doing if you miss Sunday morning. You are condemning the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. And I love Hebrews 10.25. Every minister loves this scripture, and so do we. Let us not give up meeting together as some of them are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. I've said this in, in the service many times. The Lord gives us 10,080 minutes a week. Are we too selfish to give back 80 minutes to the Lord in his house on each Sunday morning? Number three, another thing that we never neglect is praying as a family. Each day, the family should be led in prayer together as each individual prayer individually, and especially, many people do not even pray at mealtime anymore. And how sad that is. I've said in a sermon, now I don't know how theological this is, but even a hog bows his head to eat. <laughs> Think about that for a little while. I know that you won't find that one in your theological textbooks, that's for sure. But <laughs> prayer is adoration to God, confession of sins, and um, prayer is expressing love for one another, and also expressing forgiveness of our many sins. And you'll find all five of those in the Lord's Prayer. And uh, the Lord's Prayer, that's the model prayer. That's the perfect prayer. So we must model our prayers after the Lord's Prayer. Number four, neglecting to build Christian fellowship hurts the family. Well, 2020 has really hurt Christian fellowship. And, oh, how I miss. I, you know, if everybody comes back, we can have 50 here in the church. And I know that a lot of people work in nursing homes, and many of our old people are really scared to death. But, oh, I'm looking for the day that we can get rid of this and that we have um, no excuses to get back to the Lord's house. It kind of startles me with this stat. There's been people that have missed eight months, and 20% of those will never return to church. That stat scares me, that 20% uh, of those who have not been here during the COVID will never come back to church again. And that is sad, and we hope that that does not happen to our church. And so we need to encourage people to get back. I know we can't make them, but we want to encourage them to be, because we miss you. That's what we want to say to them. We miss you so much. We need to get together again to encourage one another. And that's the basic need of church, is just church fellowship, encouraging one another in the faith. And uh, it's, it should be the highlight of your week. It's the highlight of mine to meet you guys and uh, hopefully encourage you as you walk the Christian faith. Number five, neglecting one's neighbor is to harm the family. In many parts of the world, a neighbor is only consider those who live close by. But Jesus has redefined neighbor. He said that if someone is in need, that is your neighbor. And I found that happened in the, the windstorm that we had, uh, the ratio, that people helped one another to get their homes back in order. We had a great celebration uh, and, at the park. And uh, it was great to see people helping out one another and getting our town back in order. And uh, that's what we should do to Christians and non-Christians. I know my neighbor, just never really hard had seen him before, just helped me pull all the limbs so that to the street so that uh, the town could pick them up. And I really appreciated that. And that's what we did. We helped one another out. And it shouldn't take a duration for that to happen. <coughs> See, buddy, if somebody in need, that is your neighbor. And I know that we're a little bit literally about that nowadays. So I remember we used to pick up hitchhikers on the road, uh, interstate, pick them up. And now we're a little bit literally of doing that because of all the murder and crime. But uh, one thing that's really suffered is Christian hospitality. Now, my mom and dad 
just love to have people over to have coffee, cookies, cake, and ice cream. Uh, and I was a kid and I said, what are these guys doing? They're not even playing games. And they seem to be enjoying one another. Now I did join them when it's time for cake and <laughs> ice cream. I did join them for that. I got, got into that. And I wondered why I had a weight problem my whole life. But, uh, but anyway, but we're doing the same today. The highlight of, of Bliskin, and we hope to get back together as soon as possible, is cake and coffee and, and a devotion on Tuesday at the Birdrest. That's the highlight. I know we know that we live in a small time, town, and that's the highlight. But we miss fellowship, and we miss that church fellowship that we get together and encourage one another in the faith. Number six, we're coming way up nine to do. We're on the sixth one. Neglecting the opportunity to serve others versus the family. It kind of goes along with the last one. Jesus warned about the person who hears the word but does but uh, lets the cares of the world and preoccupation with riches choke the word so that it becomes unfruitful. And that's what happens so often that we're so busy doing our own thing and concerning ourselves with getting ahead of the Joneses that um, we don't take time to be a servant to someone else. Jesus' greatest ministry was that he was a servant to all people. He loved them. He spoke to them. He healed them. He fed them. And he was just doing everything that he could to draw men unto himself. That's what the scripture says. And we must do the same thing to draw people into God's love, to our love for them. And uh, sometimes by just helping somebody out, they'll say, hey, you're not so bad. You're not so bad. I, I, I really appreciated what you did for me. And I, I've seen that happen. And even in 2020, when so many people are hurting in so many ways, just a word of encouragement. And maybe, maybe helping them out financially a little bit. These are things that mean so much to them. Number seven, neglecting to become a tither and hinders family values. I am really proud of this church. We've had some big bills here at the church. $43,000 for the uh, boilers and the air conditioner. And you guys came through. I'm so proud that during the month of December, we had 5,000 given from people that didn't even attend the church that had attended or friends from the church in the past, that they were willing to give $5,000 and in a tough time of the COVID and uh, also uh, not meeting together. Uh, but they're watching out for us because they love what you have been to them in their Christian life, even when they're not here. We have some faithful people. It takes $1,200 to keep this church running per week. And um, you guys have been good. And you can then do it to us as a, as a family. And we really appreciate your love. And I love this little, this, this is a good story about tithing. Um, about three men who were on a ship. And uh, somehow a big storm came up. And caps, top, cap, uh, uh, capsized the, uh, the boat. And they were fortunately to swim to a deserted island. Two of the men were just scared to death. We're never going to be found on this deserted island. But there was one man that was completely at peace during this whole thing. And the other two said, how come you're so much at ease? And the man said, you know, I'm a multi-millionaire. And I believe in tithing. My minister will find me. <laughs> so, uh, so, so that's one of the great things about tithing. Your minister will find you if you're in trouble. So that's, that's uh, I like that one. Number eight, next to last. Neglecting to praise and thank God hurts the family. A significant event took place in the life of a poor family. The father fortunately went to the bank and was able to secure a loan so that they could uh, keep the family farm going. Well, it came to meal time, and the, and the wife suggested, you know, the Lord has really blessed us. He has really watched out for us. I want you, my husband, 
to pray for our meal that we're about to eat. Well, the man had never really done this before, but somehow he mustered enough courage to have a prayer of thanksgiving for the meal. It went so well that he felt so good about it that it was a tradition from that day on that every meal they praised the Lord for what had been given to them. There are so many scriptures, especially in Psalms, about thanksgiving. One thing about David we know is that he was a very thankful, thankful servant. The whole book of Psalms, Psalms is songs praising the Lord for what he has done for them. He, that's why David was called a man after God's own heart, because he was so thankful to the Lord and worshiped the Lord in such a tremendous way. And we must take that example and worship the Lord our God every time we get a chance. And every time we get a chance, when we see the Lord work in our life, we say thank you. We say thank you. The affectionate, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, the scriptures tell us. Last point. Neglecting to respond to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit impoverish, impoverish us or the family life. In other words, uh, we can't neglect the Holy Spirit because we'll be impoverished if we do. Conversation through Christ brings with it the gift of God's Holy Spirit in the presence of our life at baptism. Acts 2.38 tells us the importance of the Holy Spirit that we receive when we're baptized in Christ. That's probably one of our favorite scriptures in our church is Acts 2.38. Peter preached a powerful sermon on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 came forward to be baptized into Christ. And uh, it's so important that they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. To neglect the Holy Spirit is to live an impoverished life. This morning, I had learned a song when I was a kid that God is our Father, Jesus is our brother, and the Holy Spirit is our guide. The Holy Spirit helps us to discern. He's like a burglar alarm at our home when it goes off, when somebody has come to your house uninvited. When the smoke detector goes off, you know that something is not right. Where there is smoke, there is fire. When a metal detector, metal detector, uh, at the airport goes off, it makes a beeping sound and that gives it a alarm alarm to check things. These alarms help us to know that something is not quite right. In your soul and in your heart, you have an alert system through the Holy Spirit. When you sin, that alarm goes off and the Holy Spirit tells you to straighten up and avoid this particular situation. You've all been there. You know but how sad when we neglect that alarm. But the Holy Spirit not only alarms us, He comforts us, He guides us, He teaches us, and He helps us. What a gift at baptism we receive when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He loves us so much. Just like your children, when they're in trouble, you help them and, uh, and, and warn them that they're in trouble. And, and uh, grab them from harm's way. That's what the Holy Spirit does for each one of us because He loves us so very much. Conclusion. This message has been kind of negative, but um, about some of the dangers that you will incur if you neglect the Holy Spirit's warning. And we need to take these nine things, take them to heart, because the Lord loves us so much. It has been said that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I would change that to a many thousands and thousands of pounds of love that the Lord has us because He wants to keep us safe. He loves us. He wants us to be in heaven. So He wants us to do these nine things that I have mentioned. 
so that someday we'll be with him, with our families forever in heaven. Let's pray. Holy Father, I thank you so much for the family, especially at, at uh, Christmas time, and it's so sad that many families do not get together uh, this Christmas because of the COVID, and that's probably one of the things that uh, has been so tough this year, not getting together at Thanksgiving and the holidays, and even the 4th of July. We love our families, and we want the very best for them. And we thank you so much for these uh, mornings that uh, we must not, uh, uh, we must avoid if we want a, a Christian family that someday will be in heaven forever and ever. And I pray that if someone does not know Jesus, that, that will be, this will be the day of salvation for them. For us, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's